Uh, working with the uh, Arapaho and Cheyenne descendants of Sand Creek uh, fundamentally reshaped the way I think about doing history, uh, both methodologically and, and also as a kind of social project. Um, I, I went into the Sand Creek project uh, thinking that I was going to write one kind of book, um, a relatively traditional history of the of the massacre, of the uh, prehistory of the massacre, then the massacre itself, and 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 maybe to some extent uh, its echoes uh, during the era of the so-called Plains Indian Wars. Um, I, I then found a dissertation written by a, a historian named Gary Leland Roberts, and it's a brilliant dissertation. It might be the best dissertation I've ever read. Uh, it's, it's this extraordinary, beautiful, uh, haunting, brilliant, painful uh, work of scholarship. It's 900 pages long. Uh, it still hasn't been published. Um, and I was confronted with an ethical dilemma. I, I realized that I could basically rewrite Gary's work and slap my name on it, um, which at some level would have been doing a public service and, uh, and would have been relatively easy, uh, or I could write a different book. Um, and I then went to uh, a planning meeting for the National Park Service's uh, Sand Creek National uh, historic site. This was relatively early in the memorialization planning process. And there were these extraordinary and weird and wonderful characters fighting about history. And I was captivated. These were people who were having impassioned discussions about why history matters and and how it can matter for the broadest possible publics again plural and i just thought this was terrific and so i thought well maybe i could write a little bit about this and initially i thought i was going to just do a, a magazine article i hoped it would be for the popular press um but the people involved were were interesting enough and wonderful enough that I was hooked. And, and the story of Sand Creek was horrific enough that, that I thought that there was more to say about it. And it was at that point that I, I realized that I, if I wanted to do this project, I was going to need to work very closely with the Arapaho and Cheyenne descendants uh, of, of the people who were at the massacre, either killed or survived the massacre. And so I went to them and asked them if they were willing to work with me. And that's a, a, a whole story on its own. And, and uh, if you care, I can let you know about it. But it was, it was a, a very, very convoluted process. And what I eventually uh, decided was that I would, I, I would bind myself using uh, tribal protocols uh, to produce oral histories or ethnographies that would uh, follow the traditional tribal methodologies. Um, and that's what I did. Uh, I, I went and I, I interviewed people and I agreed that I would not paraphrase, but that I would reproduce uh, their words exactly in the way that they had been related to me. Um, I used a variety of different, what I think of as best practices for oral history. I, I taped every conversation. This is in the era of audio tape. There's no digital files of these, at least as yet. Uh, I taped every conversation. I then uh, made copies of the tapes and sent them to the people with whom I had conversed and offered them the opportunity to either amend or redact anything that they were uncomfortable uh, with having revealed to me. Um, I then had them transcribed and I sent transcriptions of the conversations and offered the same opportunity. Uh, and, and what all of this meant was that it was a very slow process. Uh, it, it was, I mean, there's a slow food movement. This was the slow history movement in an era in which uh, all of my smart friends were increasingly moving toward digital methods. I was going back in time and doing things very, very, very slowly. But it, it bore fruit for me in a couple of different ways. First of all, it, it allowed me to forge relationships which had an impact on, on the work that I ultimately did. And second of all, methodologically, it allowed me to think 
very seriously about the kind of methods that historians use, the kind of methods that historians value. And, and the book then became a sort of meditation on methodology and, and the way in which oral history and other methods uh, do and don't work. And, and when I say do and don't work, I don't mean necessarily uh, the, the, their, their, their utility for reflecting facts, the, the sort of truth value, but I mean the way in which they are used by different peoples at different times. And uh, that became one of the foundations of what I was working on. Uh, so it, it, was, it was a long and in many ways a sort of tortuous process, but it, it was fruitful ultimately. It just, uh, you know, it took a decade to write a book that I hoped was going to take about three or four years to write.